Welcome, this is Zon with Repo Products. Today's video is on creating a custom footing uh, connection, uh, column footing connection. This is a request by a user. The gentleman asked me to take a look at what he was doing. And here are some pictures that he sent. You're trying to create this base plate with some bolts that is that are raised uh, above this footing. And if we look at it in this other view here, you can kind of see what it looks like. And for some reason, he just said he can't seem to get it to function properly or maybe parametrically not make it function correctly. So all I have to work off of are these pictures. And so here is the footing created. And this plate that I created actually has another family inside it called a bolt. And that bolt is nested inside this family. Everything is parameterized and controlled in this family. It is then taken and loaded into a standard project. I created a column. I placed that uh, plate connection at the bottom of the column. And this footing is actually a custom generic footing. And the reason I do it this way is because the standard uh, footing command under the structure tab here, the isolated footing, by default, it stays attached to the bottom of the column. Therefore, uh, you can't have that kind of a gap. Now, before I go into the creation and explanation of all of this, <clears throat> in uh, Revit 2019, which is what I'm in now, they do have a tab called Steel, and they have a connection here. 2018, it's under the Structure tab. You can use this tool and look at the settings of this tool to introduce parametrically created connections for you. And you can just use the command to build the plate already. Now, if I look at that plate and look at the parameters of the plate, uh, it is pretty heavily uh, database driven. There is a window dialog box. You can click and uh, change any of the settings that you want and the plate and the bolt and everything about it will adjust accordingly. Assuming we didn't go this route, when we went this route, this is how this family was made. <clears throat> Going to close that view. And I'm going to close this 3D view. And we'll look at this plate. So this plate was created as a brand new family. I used the um, structural stiffener, so a new family. And I went down to the S's, and I said structural stiffener. And all it gave me was two reference planes and the categorization up here of structural stiffener. Once I started there, I created reference planes that defined the overall width, the depth, um, the distance from the outside edge, uh, to the center of the bolt placement holes on both left, right, top, and bottom, upper portion and lower portion. And I also kept them equal on both ends, uh, top and left, because this reference plane is defining the origin, and this is defining the origin. So my origin insertion point is here, which is pretty common for columns and footings. So I kept that in line. When you are creating this geometry, which is nothing more than an extrusion, if I select it and edit the extrusion, you'll see it's nothing more than a rectangle, a square in this case. And if I go to the front elevation <clears throat> and I finish the command, you'll see that that extrusion is right there. And I have moved the top and the bottom of that plate, the faces of them, to align and lock to the reference planes that define the top and the bottom. I also have parameters created for the thickness as well as the width and the depth. I have parameters for the bolt length, the depth um, into the footing, because this plane right here is the uh, origin, defined origins plane. So my insertion point is really here. And then um, these bolts are actually families themselves. And so if I take a look at one of these bolts and I select it, I can click Edit Family. 
and you'll see it's just a bolt. Now this bolt, I didn't actually create this. I found this off of the web. And if I go to the plan view <clears throat> and zoom in, you can see why I just pulled it from the web. I didn't want to have to go through the math of creating the family and setting up the parameters so that the hexagon bolt stays proper when you change the size of the bolt and the length of the bolt. Once I have that bolt created properly, all I did was I said load into project and loaded it into this plate family that I created. I then took the bolt, so if I create a, another one over here, um, all I did was I used the align command to align to that plane, the center of that. And same thing down, and then also in elevation. So if I head over to the elevation view, you can see that the bolt is placed at the correct point. So I wanted the bottom of the bolt nut here to be aligned to the top face of that plate. Also, if you look at this bolt and go to the properties of the bolt, you're going to see that there is a length right here. <clears throat> this length, um, dimension L, is a has actually been associated to a parameter called bolt length that I created in this host family which is right here. And the reason I did that is so that I can use this dimension and change this when this entire family is inside a project instead of having to drill back to the bolt level. Okay. So once all of those four bolts are placed and aligned and locked properly, I flexed everything to make sure it's functioning the way I want it to function. And then I load it into the project. So when I load it into the project, so if I start a new project, We'll start a structural one. I'll go back to the reference level of the family. I'll load it into the project. And for now, I will place it uh, on level one. OK? So here, load into the project, level one. And if I go under families, you'll see under structural stiffeners, the column footing plate. And I can right click and I can say create an instance and place it. Now that I've placed it, I can go ahead and put in a structural column that is from level one up to level two, for example, and place it where I need to place it. I'll just place it over here for now. And then I can change this level of detail to a fine level of detail. I can use the align command to align and lock. So it's placed exactly where I want. I then can go to an elevation view, say for example north, and you can see it's being placed right there. Now the column itself, I'm going to change its base offset to say six inches high from level one and let it pop up. Or I could just use the align command and align to the top of that plate, that column. If it doesn't allow you to do that, just double check the height from here to here. And it's coming in at 10 and a quarter. So let me adjust this to say 10.25 inches. And it pulls it up. Okay. As for that generic footing, all I did was just created a uh, new family with the generic model Revit family template file. And I just made a basic rectangular extrusion called generic footing. And it looks like this. It has basic footing length, width, and it has uh, depth. And then I just take that and I load that into the project. And when I go to place it, I place it where I need, which is right there. Now, just to be sure, you can either cut a section or go to the elevation. I'll go back to north elevation. And you can see it's placed right there. See that? Um, again, if I look at this uh, column to footing custom plate that I created, I can go to the type properties and I can see things like height offset from level, uh, thickness, and so on. So you can make any value changes that you want here, and it should adjust here for you as well. Okay. If I want to, if I just use the move command and move it down, it'll let me move it. Um, the reason is because I'm not using something that's a structural stiffener starting Revit family template file that has some um, <clears throat> restrictions on movement. 
I just used a generic model, um, Revit family template file as well. So you can do that approach if you need to. And again, lastly, you know, if you need to make sure things are measuring correctly, I would double check this dimension. It says five and a quarter. So if I select my column, drop it down by uh, 5.25 inches, whoops, then it should come down. Okay. And that's how you create, if I look at this in 3D, this is how you'll see that footing get created and the custom plate being created and it goes into it. Now obviously it's not as parametric as the tools that come with the steel tab of the ribbon and the connections panel here. It's not that parametric, okay, but it has some basic functionality. I hope that uh, this video explains how to go about building this custom plate with the bolts and how to host it into a project and place it accordingly. Uh, because this footing lastly is generic, um, it could be any size you want, you know, for example, um, three by four, whoops, by four, by six, see? <clears throat> um, it doesn't necessarily have its top center uh, aligned, anchored, and locked to the bottom of the column because the typical one that comes from here, isolated, will do that, and then you'll have that problem with trying to create the gap. Uh, if you need further explanation or want to go into the actual creation from start to finish, just let me know and then I can get with you one-on-one -on -one and I can walk you through step-by-step -step how it's created. Other than that, thank you very much for watching.